Hello my outstanding friends. I finally am going to make good on my threat to do a book <laughs> on atomic theory. Now, what are we looking at there? That is exactly what they see at CERN and Fermilab when they smash their huge particles together. They call these Higgs fields. Now, I am going to I have some claims to make and I have all of this starts with this. Long ago, this was my theory on dipole atomic flood theory. And this was my final paper. Right? It was a lot more to it than this. This was my final paper. And, um, and it made reference to the electrostatic columbic forces, repulsive forces between the nuclei and between the electrons. And 100% of matter is dipoles, and this was added later, but I did say way back then, light is atomic dipole vapor, which it is. Light is a dipole, and all particles, everything that exists are dipoles. However, you can split the dark from the white, but it come back together as quick as it can. Okay, pay close attention to this. These are different colors. You see there's green, there's blue, there's red. Now, the blue is not a lot. The green is not a lot. The red is a lot. And the little white spritz here are like sizzlers. Now, why are they seeing these different colors in these different quantities? I, I'm going to tell you why. This is my claim, is that there's these basic colors. The red, green, blue appear to be the basic colors, and the blue is a sizzler, the green is a little less sizzly, and the red is sort of lazy. However, they are all made up of the W and Z boson. That's the only particles that exist. This is my model right here. That's it. <laughs> and I, you know, I, obviously, I got a lot of, of uh, can you see that? I got a lot of stuff to go on. This I'm working on it right now, and it's, it's almost done. And the, the book should hopefully I'm get it done early next year. Now, everything consists of the muon, electron, neutrino, and the electron neutrino burns. The muon doesn't. It's a bowling ball. Precisely what they have said at CERN and Fermilab. I agree. The two of them together create a photon, as you will see, and that bounces. These burn. That's bounces. All right, now, so this is my claim. I am going to show you these three different colors and why they exist in those colors and in those quantities. It's because where they exist around the electron's core, there's a dark a heart in the center of every proton and nucleus there is. And once you get up into the 1823 of these little particles that I showed you, which is the little black and white particles, uh, where is it? Well, all it is is a W and Z boson. That's it. Here, where's my, oh, here it is. All right, so you got 1,823 of these particles. Nobody's ever seen the black before. So really, it's a uh, a proton is made up of one less electron than it would make to make it neutral. At 1824 it becomes neutral and becomes a neutron. So 1823 electrons, which are these, turn into a ball. Well, what happens in the ball? They just all ball up like snowballs? No. The black particles go right to the center. And I'll show you this in the Russians' space experiment, because we are nothing more than a ball in space, which gives us dark matter in our core, which attracts the, the white matter. What happens is the white matter is attracted to the center, and the closer to the center, the harder it's held. So that's why we got blue if it's real close, we got green if it's a little further out, not so, and then we got red and it's a little looser. But and that's why the quantities is so much red because it's completely on the very outside. So there's a thick layer of that red, and then there's a layer of green, which is less, and then there's a layer of blue, which is less than that. And then you have the dark core. And when this thing bounces off of something, that, that they bounce. 
It's called the Kashmir effect. Red is low electron volts, and it mostly comes off in heat. You know, red is like, a, you know, um, infrared. Now, then you get into green, it's a little more powerful. And then blue is a rocket ship. Can I show you these? Absolutely, I can. Can I show you the white electron neutrinos? Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at what these different colors and quantities represent. Okay, I believe this deserves a real close look. As, as you saw from Fermilab and CERN, these are the tiniest particles they can find, and they are the same ones we found using light. They use two, two bigger particles. They have to dig through debris. We can see it. Now, what I want to do is take those showers that we created here. You see that? And here is the same thing. If we could use this laser, a cheap laser, a little pulse laser, and you, the reason you're getting this squirty, heavy-duty particle squirt out of there is because of the black heavy-duty particles slamming the white through the restriction. And that's all it is. It's, it, it requires no energy whatsoever. This is where the Higgs fields start because the white has to get back to the black. And we can actually show you that. And they manifest themselves in little six packs all over the place. Very, very elegant as they recombine right here back to the black. And you'll see the black actually being absorbed right into the white. It's absolutely amazing. You see that? That's from a red pulsed laser. What we're seeing here is the tips of those Higgs fields coming at us. And they are cone shaped. They go back this way. And the tip, tip, tip is what starts to add into the black. They are reabsorbed to become black and white particles, just like they started out. Now, some of them get absorbed way down in the pockets, but most of them are only on the tips. And here's those six packs. You see? There's that little two, four, six, two, four, six. Each add two into each other, and they make these elegant little six packs everywhere. It's not just this tip, it's every one of them does the same thing. All right, I showed you the dark matter. And dark matter is literally everywhere. There's dark matter saturated here, just like it is here, just like it is here, just like it is here, 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 here. The only way you can see it, though, is if you take the completely white particle and it put, the black has to be on top of it. It never separates like that. They're always, as a unit, the Dirac neutrino. We separated them, created fission and fusion. And that's the only way you will ever see those black particles. You're never going to see them on their own, just laying around. They're going to be attached to something, it appears to me. I do believe there's extra, though. I believe extra black ones can accumulate around white ones or white ones around black ones, it's, it goes both ways, but I don't think there's an even number. And the reason I think that, because where do these all black ones come in that are starting to tag back to the white ones? You see them making these stripes out of here? Because the black, white ones want the other white ones to stay away from them. They do not like each other. Stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away. And then the blacks fill in to recombine. As I showed you, the white wraps right around the block. And right here, I think we get a hell of a lot of energy. And this is what I'm asking to have it examined. That's really all I'm asking for, is to have this examined. And if it works, right there, we could possibly harvest just tons of energy. And it wants so desperately to be back to its black partner. The white sounds so desperately to be back to the black. We could send it through all kinds of devices and use that energy. It's free, and then you carry it around like this. All right, you could carry it around just like this. This is a device that it was minuscule, absolutely tiny. And if you can get enough energy, and they, they claim the amount of increase in energy is absolutely exponential. This should power a house, a car, water pumps, ex lighting, anything you want for free. Once you build it, pst, Done. Solid state, run forever, case closed. We do this all day long, right onto a substrate. We could do this. I mean, it's not being done. We don't have the money to do this stuff. But we could do this all day long. Now, in the big particle colliders, they want to smash something and get all a bunch of energy and then turn that somehow into 
energy. Now, we're just squirting these raw electrons. That's what they want, is the electron power. We've isolated it. And I think we can get free energy, but it's going to take a little bit of money. But no, thousands of dollars, not, not even $20,000 probably. You could figure this out. And it, it would either it's going to work or it isn't going to work. And in one month, the case is closed. Yes or no. I see no question whatsoever with some good engineers and enough money that you could buy, get some good lasers and design a little Venturi. And you, you can use right now um, the solar collectors they have now to see if it increases the energy. That's all. If it increases it, it means we're going to get free energy. If it doesn't, we're screwed. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible timing. I just clicked on my email and this pops up from my friend who was with NASA and the European Space Agency, very hooked in with all of this new stuff. And he sent me this knowing what I do. And this is about inside the proton, the most complicated thing you could possibly imagine. Now it says the positively charged particle at the heart of the atom is an object of unspeakable complexity. It is positively charged, I agree. Complexity, I do not agree. It changes its appearance depending on how it is probed. Exactly, it has magnetic influences. And that includes light or any type of device that interacts with its field. We've attempted to connect the proton's many faces to form the most complete picture yet. So they're doing all kinds of things to try to keep this within the standard model, and that does not work. This is the complexity that they're talking about. It's not one of these with a bunch of little quarks scooting around. It is a this, which is all muons and electron neutrinos. The two of them together make what we always considered was an electron. Nobody's ever seen a dark matter before. It is virtually all the weight. And every white particle appears to have a black particle attached to it. Now, I believe there is excess black particles in the universe because they suck these white particles t down to them. Earth is nothing more than a, 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 a... Gravity is nothing more than sucking the white particles down. And I can show that because they did that in space. I think I already showed to you, but maybe not, but you're certainly going to see it one way or the other today. Okay, when I said that the, the particles would change shape when they probe them. Well, what they're probing them with is magnetic fields and trying to absorb their magnetic fields, and then they just change everything about them. If you, ju if you just absorb the radiation, which is what we did with the CMOS phones, they're just cell phones, but they're CMOS. So the only thing we're doing is picking up what that thing would radiate way over here, way over here, it doesn't matter. So we're not even interfering any with it whatsoever. They are using CMOS too, yes. But in addition to that, they're using magnetic pickups heads and so forth to see what are the magnetic fields that are... And as they do, when the magnetic field radiates out, they interfere with that magnetic field. So they say, well, and when we look at it, they change. We can't look at it. If you look at it, it changes it. That's what the observer effect is. It's, it's the way you observe it, yes. So now they've twisted the way they've been doing this. Now they're going to strictly CMOS, I believe. That was the latest upgrade they did, along with focusing, which is exactly what we have been doing since seven years ago, and exactly what I mentioned to everybody back then. I said, we've got the particles. I'll show you right now. And like I say, these are the, well, you can see them right there. Those are the particles. Okay, this is a representation from Fermilab, from uh, Don Lincoln. Is matter and antimatter, which is the Dirac neutrino. And they're normally attached together. I agree with that. And don't forget, I just showed you the Dirac neutrinos. Now, they're really up and down. They're not laying this way. You could see it that way, but it's, it is not that way because they spin to the axis of the Earth, and they spin this way. So this right here is an electron, and that's an electron. All right? They call them gluons, electrons. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's the black and the white particle together that cause this, this particle, which they call the Dirac neutrino. We were able to split the white from the black, and that is a tight bond. That is a tight bond. 
Okay, the green is really powerful. That's it, as I showed you a moment ago, with the black and the white particle. This is as it comes through the Venturi. All the black is going to this side, and only white is going this side. This is also picking up white. Now, in the, in the red, it's a little more controllable, and we were able to get a very good focus on the red. Here's the red. Uh, hold on, let me get a good shot of the red. Okay, we did the same thing I just showed you with the green. That's the same particle. Red, we did the same thing. And right, this is that location right there. So here's what happens is it starts to accelerate and then it explodes here, creating literally an atomic explosion. That's a subatomic explosion. Fission right here, fusion right here. And if you think I'm wrong, tell me why I'm wrong. We started out with those particles attached together. You see it? They were attached. That's fused together. The red ones are the same way. You see? The red ones are exactly the same way. But when they hit over here at the Venturi, all bets are off. They're exploded. Now, so these all started as these diaracs, the black and the white together. It's pretty obvious what we're looking at. And it's also obvious as to what CERN or uh, Fermilab had said, these are the smallest particles that exist, and here they are right there. Those are the ones that we have, and they're fused together here, and at the bottom they're fission and fusion. All right, it broke apart here, and they fused back together. These are the muon and electron neutrino, which is the diarac, and this is the split where the sterile muon goes off, and the shower comes through. It's, 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 that's it. That's it right there. Can we put a harvester right there? I think maybe we can, <coughs> if we could. It's as simple as this. Simple as that. The harvester goes right there. A little bit of it comes back to power the laser. The rest goes out to do whatever you want with it. Raw electricity should be very, very, very powerful. Now we spoke about the black hole in space. That's a black hole in space. And we are in space and the core of our Earth is saturated with dark matter because that's what draws the white particles, which is electricity. Static, lightning, electricity, Earth ground. We have either have a hole in the center of our Earth as a black hole or it's just saturated with dark matter. I say it's, well, I'm not going to say anything. Don't forget. This is acceleration. I don't care how anybody can not see that. How could you not see that? And this is fission and fusion. And here's the fission right here where the black and whites broke apart. And here's where they came back together. In between, it's raw electrons. And this is the muon neutrino, electron neutrino. Together is the diorite. I think I've made this pretty damn clear. Now, what have I not shown you here is our electron showers. You see that? That's what we got for electron showers. These are Higgs fields. We got them on steroids. I mean literally on steroids. And they are these particles. And they do come back together. And when they come back together, the white literally reattaches to the black and wraps right around it and grabs a hold of it and makes it back into a particle. 